Say it, say moody, nice still. Okay, okay, let me relax. <laughs> I hope y'all are doing fine today. Welcome back to my channel slash podcast. It's your boy Tyson. I hope y'all like I, I already said that. Hope y'all are doing fine today. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. So today's podcast is a little different, as y'all can tell. Y'all can hear music in the background. Um, y'all let me know if y'all like that. Um, I've been trying to think of ways to revamp videos and the podcast as well give it a more podcasty you know a little bit more you know professional you know professional sprinkles spices on it you know season you always use seasoning we are not our oppressors <laughs> but for real no i've been thinking of ways to revamp and do stuff um new stuff for youtube i'm thinking about um collaborating with some people and um life outside of youtube as well um looking at um different job opportunities and stuff so i haven't been on in a while so i do apologize for that um but i told y'all a couple of day, nights ago i posted megan's snl performance and i told y'all we would be discussing that in a podcast video or a video podcast form um so thank you for rocking with me i'm a youtube people and anchor people as well i appreciate the support with that being said let's go ahead and get into this so we're going to be discussing megan the stallion calling out daniel cameron on, ha- on behalf or on the behalf of Brianna Taylor, um, as well as a colors rapper consequence and um, what's going on with him. So let's start off with Megan first. Um, to give my thoughts on her performance, um, I thought the performance was very well. Um, I, like many other people, was watching to see, like, okay, how is the choreography gonna go? Because, I mean, we know she got, you know, shot in her feet. So, um, but with that being said, for her to, you know what I'm saying, have gotten shot months ago, she's moving around pretty well. Um, I know some people were critiquing that, but I mean, common sense, you get shot in the feet, you know what I'm saying? Even if you got to, the, the show must go on, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not expecting her to break out and bust down some Chris Brown type dance moves or MJ dance moves. Megan didn't really do that prior to, you know, the whole Tory Lanez incident. But with that being said, um, I think she did well. Um, I like how she centered the um, performance around, you know, Black Lives Matter, protecting black women. Um, That soundbite from Tamika Mallory was just like icing on the cake. I loved the whole performance. I really did. Um, And I know a lot of people say, you know, they don't really care for symbolic activism but to me you know what i'm saying you had you had um time to get up on the stage and say anything and the fact that you stood for our pe- stood up for our people you know what i'm saying i can admire that regardless of you know what i'm saying the naysayers so with that being said i did enjoy the performance um so now kentucky general attorney general sorry daniel cameron has responded to her in her performance, he was asked on a, um, when I saw it, I saw it through a, um, on a video through Twitter. He had responded to her, um, but we will get into his response in a minute. So, to catch all up on current news on the case, the Attorney General Daniel Cameron, I mean, um, sorry, Daniel Cameron, announced a few months ago the grand jury's decision to indict one of the three Louisville Metro Police Department officers for wanton endangerment for shooting into neighboring apartments during the raid that killed Breonna Taylor. So recently, a judge had given Cameron until Wednesday of one of these last few weeks to respond to a motion filed last week by an anonymous grand juror on the Breonna Taylor case that seeks the release of the recordings, transcripts, and reports of the grand jury relating to the case. The motion asks to make a binding declaration that the grand juror has the right to disclose information, particularly to avoid fears that Cameron would attempt to use the court's powers of contempt in case of a public disclosure. So in response to that, he has filed motions, Daniel Cameron, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, Cameron has filed motions to keep Brianna Grant, Brianna's grand jury file secret. All right. So now that y'all are all caught up on the news end of it and what's going on inside the courtroom, um, his response to Megan Thee Stallion's performance is what I want to get into. So of course he gave the kumbaya, yes, we must protect black women, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Um, but I want to get in 
or hone in on his specific quote, the fact that someone would get on national television and make disparaging comments about me because I'm simply trying to do my job is disgusting, Daniel Cameron said. It's neither the time, Cameron said, nor will it be, or it's neither the first time, Cameron said, nor will it be the last time. At the end of the day, my responsibility is to provide facts and truth and represent and stand up for justice, he said. All right, so I kind of want to go a little bit into this. Um, I don't find this person to be genuine. I just don't. His vibe looks off to me. When he speaks, he, I mean, he, I'm not even trying, well, you know what? I don't give a fuck. We all judge people. He looks weird as fuck. <laughs> he just looks off. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can't really explain it. Can't put my finger on it. But nonetheless, I, I just don't trust the word that comes out of this man's mouth. And I want to make it clear that just because somebody is black, that doesn't mean we should assume them to automatically do things in the best interest of us. That's why when people are like, oh, we need black candidates and another black president. Uh, no, we need a person who has the right demands and the right interest in black people and in equality. And if that just happens to be a black person, then that is OK. But just having a black body president or pres not president, but present is not enough. Look at Candace Owens. She's black. Does she have the best interest for black people? No, she does not. <laughs> she may think that she does, but she doesn't. Um, so with that being said, I don't think that um, anything genuine that comes out of Daniel Cameron's mouth, I, I, I don't think anything that comes out of his mouth is genuine. Um, I also don't think that your job title, regardless of what you do, your job title does not guarantee you an absence of criticism. I mean, granted, it's not the best example, but people critique the president for God's sakes. You know what I'm saying? Now, this one is, you know, he earns a lot of that critique, but nonetheless, you know what I'm saying? Nobody is above reproach if we don't like how you're handling stuff, especially something that has been blown up to this magnitude. The media is constantly talking about Breonna Taylor. You're going to be under a, magnoscope, or, or, or under a magnifying scope. Especially when for the first month or two, what was he? He was like, what, honeymooning or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So you should expect people to, you know, give you backlash. I believe he was getting married. I don't know, something like that. He's taken a lot of time to, on handling this case. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that he's filing motions to keep Brianna's grand juror files a secret, that just tells me he's hiding something. That's just me personally, how I feel on it. Like I earlier just saw the TMZ clip uh, clips of the body cams and Brianna's body is dead on the floor. Like, I, I don't know what more proof he needs. I, I don't understand. And if I'm not mistaken, the person that they were looking for had already been in custody like an hour earlier. So just a lot of stuff with the story is not, it's not adding up. Y'all trying to make two plus three equal four. And that's not, that's not, that ain't how that works. At any rate, my heart is with Louisville as well as Mississippi. I know they just let um, Derek Chauvinistic, I mean Chauvin, <laughs> off on bail. And, uh, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but for real, um, I know they just let him off of, a, I believe, a $1 million bail or bond. And I'm like, I know cops do not get paid that fucking much. I mean, I'm in a small city. I've seen what our cops get paid. So I don't have anything to compare it to. But I know that a million dollars, mm, at any rate. With that being said, um, y'all be careful in Louisville and Mississippi because people are tired. I know that much. I may not know exactly what happened that night with Brianna and all of that, but what I do know is people are tired of this shit. And, um, you know, they said October is going to have a lot of surprises. We already got our president who allegedly has, you know what, and is trying to hold stimulus checks till after the election, which it's not trying to help his case. But at any rate, um, if I'm not mistaken, I heard we're having two full moons this month. Um... And just a whole bunch of other slew of things that's went on. Um, with this, um, if they do not, actually, if they actually go through the motion of keeping her grand jury files a secret, I can almost guarantee there's going to be a riot somewhere. So I heard through the grapevine, people are definitely teeing up for something big. So with that being said, Louisville, Mississippi, y'all be careful out there. Be careful everywhere. People are sick of this shit. And on top of that, there's a whole pandemic going on. So they literally have to sit in the house and watch it. Some of them are out of work. 
you know, some of them just, they may not even care that much. They might just be bored and want to go cause some chaos, but chaos. But I can tell you there are people who are genuinely sick and tired of this shit. So y'all please be careful going out when y'all have to. And wear your mask, be safe, be careful, all of that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. All right, so the next topic is involving rapper, New York rapper, Consequence, born April 17th, 1977, Dexter Raymond Mills Jr. All right, so now that you got a little back line, if y'all didn't know who he was, he was also on Love & Hip Hop. All right, so real quick before we go into the most current news about him, let's go into some backstory of Consequence. So like I told y'all, he's a New York rapper. Um, the little that I know of him, he was on Love & Hip Hop, and um, he had a specific scene with the rapper Loyal, who I don't I don't know if she raps anymore, but I do know she's a part of Angel Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club. I know she's a part of her lip um, service podcast. I watch their episodes from time to time. They're pretty funny. Um, nonetheless, he was on Love and Hip Hop. He was trying to get L'Oreal to do a song. And he decided to bring colorism to Love and Hip Hop as if they needed anything else toxic in that environment. So he wanted to work with her, but L'Oreal had one condition. And the song that she proposed, or he proposed to her in the song, she disliked the line of his that he wrote, which stated, light skin is the right skin, so you, 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 and your white friend. She wanted that to be removed because she didn't want to offend her darker skinned fans. Now, I wanna go ahead and say on the record, I'm not aware if color, if Laurieism, wow. <laughs> if L'Oreal has a colorist past that we don't know about, maybe she said some things back in the day. To my knowledge, she identifies as black. I know she is very ambiguous looking. So I'm not sure if she's mixed, claiming black, or if she's black with two parents and she just has that um, Giselle Bryant type of thing going on, which I even heard Giselle has a mixed parent. But to me, that would be like the Obama's children. So she would still be black to me. Uh, she'd just be ambiguous. But nonetheless, I'm not sure what kind of past L'Oreal has. So I do need to go on record saying that. This is not to cape for her. You know, she did the she did what she was supposed to do you know what i'm saying really and truly what she should have did said was the minute that he put that in that song and she heard that she should have just walked out that studio and bounced because i i can't work with you after that but nonetheless i just need to go on record and say that i already had a oopsie moment earlier i was watching lovely tees live on my jog and it was um uh, revolving around Fox Soul's colorism conversation, which one was poorly executed. They did the same thing that every platform does, which is when um, mainstream platform, which is water it down to pretty much like, oh, the boys never wanted me, but now I'm dark skinned and confident. I mean, they went a little extra further and, you know, included the fact that now all the boys come back to them and say, you were the one I really wanted. But you know what I'm saying? Just surface level stuff. Colorism goes so far more than just dating, which is why when people say, oh, maybe you're just ugly, I don't even I don't even entertain that conversation when people say that. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I'm feeling a little, you know, boo-boo the fool because I actually asked Claudia, not saying that I'm the reason why the segment is, you know, went on, not saying that I'm single wholeheartedly, like, you know, they were never going to do a colorism conversation, but I did ask her a few months back in the Instagram DMs to, um, I sounded so old when I said that, in the DMs on Instagram <laughs> to cover colorism, because I was like, I liked Fox Soul, I was like, these ladies keep it raw, they keep it real, maybe they'll be able to be a little bit less um, average when it comes to the conversation than your typical mainstream colorism conversation. And I was proven wrong. Um, yup, so I had to take that L right there. <laughs> but yeah, turns out Miss Claudia Jordan has said some really colors things and co-signed some really colors things in the past. So I just wanted to give that um, disclaimer in case something comes up about Miss L'Oreal. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into why we're talking about consequence on today's episode. All right, so recent news broke that New York rapper Consequence was a victim of online bullying when he posted a family picture at his son's birthday celebration last month. To be exact, it was not last month by now because that was when the article was posted. It was August 17th, 2020. He was approximately 113 pounds. Damn. 
and someone said that he looked like an old jumpy j old junkie i'm sorry um and he said lupus and diabetes have been kicking my ass for seven months straight he said in a re-uploaded post so i guess he re-uploaded the picture he added, but dot, 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 oddly enough, I was getting better as two weeks before that I was 105 and my sugar was in the 500s from being on steroids, but I was determined to wish my son happy birthday because as you can see it, it could have been the last time that God's will, the last time God's will is God's will and this is my story and I'm here to tell it my way. Wait till you see me in a picture now. Hashtag things are different now. All right. So. Just because he was an asshole in the past, and to my knowledge, he's never apologized for the colors things he said, I'm not going to sit here and bask in the fact that he has health issues. I would never do that. Um, I kind of look at this as the Stefan Clark approach. You know what I'm saying? I'm not glad that Stefan Clark is gone, but with what he said about dark-skinned women, you ain't going to see me out there marching for his ass. You ain't going to see me. You, no, no. Lead that to the Asian women that he exotifies. Let their community march for him. Um... And you see how his, how his exotical did him. I don't even think that bitch grieving. She worried about the money. But nonetheless, neither here nor there. That's another topic for another video. Um, with that being said, I'm kind of just giving it the Stefan Clark treatment. I don't wish him no bad, but I'm not going to be sitting here crying over the shit. You know, not that I was an avid listener of Consequence anyways. Um, but with that being said, uh, I will say God don't like ugly. <laughs> um, I do think, however, I want to take a note taking the petty out of everything i do think that it's important as black men and as black people in general that we get you know what i'm saying our health together you know what i'm saying um i just told you i was on a walk earlier i've been walking i think a week straight now and i'm just working out how to get everything down so i can get this body you know slim and i'm telling y'all right now if you follow me on instagram i'm gonna be naked every day so you're just gonna have to get used to it. i'm just playing i'm just playing <clears throat> but <laughs> trying to get my body together um i be wanting to you know go to the doctor and stuff but with everything going on right now i'm just trying to stay as healthy as i can um you know what i'm saying we need to stress the urgency to stay up on you know getting tested as far as hiv um aids stds all that shit you know what i'm saying all this get the bag culture and you know fuck this person and fuck that person and get a bag get this that's cool but when you get aids that's not gonna be so much, so so much fun. So you know what I'm saying. You need to make sure. Hell, if you're gonna be tricking, make sure they test it. I put that in my music. She trying to be my new trick. I need two things before applying. Yeah, I'm talking Corona. Better safe than the Joker. See, I'm hoping still classy. I can't fuck on no sofa. You got me fooled. Though. Okay, let me relax. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Back to what I was saying though. Um, we need to make sure that we're being safe. You know what I'm saying. Regardless of what you do. You know what I'm saying. Ain't nobody here to slut shame a judge. But make sure you're safe, not just getting tested then, but even, you know, the age that they recommend for black men to get their colonoscopies and stuff like that. I think you should go sooner, you know what I'm saying? And, and same as black women when it comes to mammograms and, you know what I'm saying, checking for, you know, fertility for your pregnancy. You don't want to be getting tested and checked when you need it. You know what I'm saying? You should you should use that as a per, do that precautionarily. That's how I feel personally. Um, so I think it's just important that as black people that we need to try to stay on top of our health. You know, I live in the South, you know, soul food is good, but we don't need to be eating that shit every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Work out, make sure you're doing something active, at least at the very least 30 minutes a day. I went running earlier, jogging, I would say jogging, walking slash walking for about an hour and a half or whatever. I mean, you don't have to do all that, but at least 30 minutes of physical exercise, you know what I'm saying? Making sure we're taking care of ourselves. You know, we wanna live long, we wanna have lineages, we wanna be proud of what we look like years down the line. So I think that's important. I think it's also important to keep some clear karma. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you treat people how you wanna be treated. Um, with that being said, like I said earlier, I don't wish any bad on this man, but y'all ain't gonna see me, you know, posting no get well, get betters. Nah, I can say that for chat with Bozeman, to who my knowledge has never said anything negative about his own people. So with that being said, y'all let me know down below. By the way, RIP chat with Bozeman. Y'all let me know down below what y'all think of today's topics. Were y'all feeling the music? Was y'all feeling the vibe of the podcast? Is there anything I could change up? Is there anything y'all want me to cover? 
Y'all let me know and I will get back to y'all on the next video slash podcast. Peace.